two minute video slash stream. All right, it's finally here, boys. It's finally here. Stage three, Overwatch League. So the uh, the deadline was yesterday. Um, Overwatch League rosters they're locked. Rest of the season, no more uh, no more moves. So this is however your team is. This is how they're gonna be. Um, I'm. I'm good with what my team did. Uh, we signed over Silkthread from the LA Valiant. Um, we paid them some some of money to uh, to acquire him because they they were not playing him, and um, he had shown it. I thought in stage one he played very well, uh, and heroes like the uh, the Pharah and the Soldier, and a bit of the Genji as well. Um, I mean, we already have a lot of DPS players on the team, but adding another one to get some more variety never a bad thing. Like, the, if they put in him and Surefor at the same time, that's a lot of versatility. You know what I'm saying? So, let me go over to... If you see, if you see my rank, it's, uh, it's fallen a bit. It's down to 3,200 instead of just about 3,400. So, that's a bit of a feels bad, man. You know what? For a little bit of gameplay, I'll show you some of my clips, I guess. While I talk in the background. So... We also signed an off-tank called Void. Um, I think I talked about this a bit a couple weeks ago when, it, when they were rumored to have signed him. Uh, now it is official. They have signed him. And he's he's uh, one of the best divas out there. He's played with Fissure before. So that's pretty great. But um, they're, me and other people have felt the same way that it could be interesting because um, our main, that Reaper LOL, um, Pretty much our main like communicator is Bishu on the team, and he's our diva now. So there's been talk of if if that will affect them at all, and um, we shall see. We'll see if they play him. Um, I don't. I'm gonna quick switch my settings. Um, we'll see. I mean, they might not. They might not play him right away. Um, I personally, I like Bishu myself. Um, yeah, I'd say Void is definitely like more talented, like more mechanically gifted. But um, with the translating. Bishu is very, very important to the team. Plus, he's a he's a positive dude. He works really hard. So I I just like him as a member of the team. Um, good guy for the team's morale and such. So um, some interesting moves from them. Um, what else? The, the Valiant traded the I don't even know what this highlight is. I traded. Oh, this is a bad blade. Um, they traded Custa, the Val or they traded the Valiant. Sorry, traded for Custa. They traded Unko to the Dallas Fuel in their turn, so they pretty much swapped Zenyatta players. Um, although in his stream, Custa did say that he's not being brought in to necessarily just be a Zenyatta, which is weird to me because um, Unko was the Zenyatta for the Valiant, and you you need a Zenyatta. So um, it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Um, Fuel and Valiant, two teams that are very much in limbo right now. Um, but anyway, I think those, I mean, for the most part, um, Dynasty signed Gambler, he had Lucio Main, um, very well regarded. He actually took a break from Overwatch and pretty recently uh, made his little return. Um, so they signed him. They are, I don't see him being in the starting lineup, though, because, oh yeah, that was the McCree 5 piece. I just helped out with a lot of the kills. Um, but yeah, because Toby's so good, and because of his chemistry with like the main roster, I think he's mainly going to be like um, as um, like on the secondary roster. So, um, and I think that was about it. All the other acquisitions people already knew about. Um, so yeah, going into stage three, Super is now of age. Um, his birthday was late March. So he's now available as a main tank for the San Fran Shock. That makes them better. Um, some A couple of the guys they signed, like Architect, are now available. And Architect's a very, very strong player. So um, they're a team that's definitely going to be improving. Um, but yeah, that's about that's about all the news, um, like, signing-wise. There wasn't as much movement as I thought there'd be, if I'm totally honest. Oh, yeah, the Valiant um, released Envy, which was shocking. Um, one of the best divas around, and they dropped him. There, there had to have been team issues there. Um, but anyway, 
that is about it for those. Um, I don't remember if I mentioned this. I think I mentioned this in the last stream, but I'll say it again anyway. Um, the They're changing the stage playoff um, format. It's going from three teams to four, which I am a fan of. Um, that's right, because I talked about it in the video I haven't released yet um, about the power ranking predictions. I'll probably do just a double upload and upload both of those today. Um, so look forward to that. And anyway, the the general consensus. Well, yeah, watch watch the watch the um, power rankings video if you wanna hear more about like the, what I think about this stage, um, the stage three like standing system and what they're gonna do for the playoffs. Um, I think it's good. I think, ba basically I'll say it very quickly, uh, there's four teams instead of three. It's a bracket system. Um, whoever gets the number one seed can choose either the two, three, or four seed to play against. And then the remaining two teams will play against each other. And then obviously the two winners will play each other for the stage three playoff. Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty much the uh, short end of that. Um, anyway, I will get into the predictions for the first two days of stage number three. And then I'm gonna say who I think um, who I think, yeah, I'll do that. Uh, who I think the top four teams will be, the teams that make the stage three playoffs, and then who I think will win it all. So, match number one today, 6 p.m. Central, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Tune in for these wad for these matches if you're available. First one, we got two struggling teams. The Shanghai Dragons, they're 0-20, still looking for that first match win against the Dallas Fuel, they're 5-15. They just traded their pretty much captain and um, one of their main communicators and one of their main support players. So we'll see how it goes for them. Um, the Dragons are gonna be working on incorporating their new players, Gaguri. Um, hopefully she plays a lot. I'm like, super excited for that. Uh, such a good off-tank player. Um, so yeah, that's that's another thing to watch today. First ever uh, woman in Overwatch League. So that's that's exciting. Um, they have Fearless and Otto who played the last um, the last week of stage number two. So I'm sure they'll be a bit better because they'll be more acclimated to the team. And then they also signed Sky, um, another support player. So. Um, I don't know if he'll be playing right away. We'll see. I mean, they've had some time to practice together, so we'll see how many of the new additions are playing right away. It really can't hurt for them. I mean, <laughs> their old roster, 0-20. So um, I think with Dragons, they're going to be much improved this um, stage. The one thing that I worry about, though, because they they only signed one damage player, and like I said in previous videos, they've lost both of their um, original DPS players, one of them permanently, may, the other one maybe permanently. Um, so that's my big thing for them. Are they gonna be able to find somebody who can um, fill that like pretty much the tracer slash hit scan role? Cause that's what they need. Otto is, is uh, your projectile player. Um, I haven't seen him on much else other than Genji. Um, I know MG, one of their previous off tanks was playing on, um, on tracer the last couple weeks. Didn't look real great. Um, didn't look awful, I guess, but I think if they're gonna win a match or a couple, they're gonna need they're gonna need better play than what they showed there. So um, this is a very interesting matchup. Could honestly go either way. Um, a lot of people have said this is the match for Shanghai. Um, you got a Dallas team that's really kind of struggling, and like maybe this is your opportunity to finally uh, push through. Um, I think Dallas wins this one though. It's it's. I don't know. Because of my overall determining factors, just because this is the first time the Dragons are going to be playing on stage together, I think that will uh, hinder them a little bit. And also because of the map pool. So the map pool for this one, it's uh, it's Volskaya they're playing on, then Numbani, Elios, and then Junkertown. And honestly, this is a pretty good set for Dallas. Um, the Volskaya has probably been the Dragon's worst map. Um, King's Row, one of their best maps, is not in the rotation anymore, so that's unfortunate for, for well, for me, because I love King's Row, and for the Dragons. Um, also, that was one of the few maps where Dive Comp didn't get played all the time. So, rip King's Row for now. Hopefully, it'll, it'll be back in stage number four. Um, 
So I think the Fuel will definitely win game one. Um, I could see Shanghai getting full held there just because they're trying to like warm up and get into it. And um, But I mean, who knows? Maybe they get the first point, they steamroll, and then it could go either way. But um, I think Dallas will take game one, and that's why they'll have the big advantage. I think game two and three, um, they'll each take one of them. Um, I think I think Shanghai could take Numbani. I think that could be a good map for them. But um, I do think Dallas Fuel will wrap it up in four. I think it'll be three to one. Um, there will be signs from Shanghai that are great, but they won't be able to put it together quite enough to beat this Fuel team. Um, but I, hey, I'm I don't know. In one hand, I'm rooting for Dallas because like, this season's been such a struggle for them. But on the other hand, it's been such a struggle for the Dragons too. So um, if they could just get that first one, that'd be great. But um, I don't think it'll happen this matchup. I do think they'll win one in Stage 3. I think at some point they'll pull one off. But uh, not now. Dell's Fuel, 3-1. to one. Match number 2. We got the rematch again. Valiant versus Dynasty. So, first time these two teams played. In Stage 1, Valiant 4-0'd the Dynasty. Then in Stage 2, the Dynasty returned the favor and 4-0'd them. What'll happen this time? Well, they're playing on Temple of Anubis, Noombani, Nepal, and then Junkertown. So, um, as you can tell, the the one difference um, in like structure, um, assault maps, the two CP is still first, but now um, hybrid maps are two, are the second game, and then your control, which is your Ilios, your Nepal, capture that point, that's game three now. And then escort is still fourth. So that's that's the one switch around that they did there. I think that's good. I think it's good to always um, switch around and change it up so it doesn't get too um, stagmented. So I think the Dynasty are going to win this one. I honestly don't think it'll be that close. Um, the Valiant are going to be trying to incorporate um, Custa. I would be surprised if he doesn't play. Um, it seems like they've kind of moved away from Verbo. Um, on support a little bit, so I have a feeling it's going to be Kareev and um, Kareev and Custa on your supports for them. But I mean, who knows? We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, I think the Dynasty will honestly take this one 4-0. Um, the Valiant have had a history of getting 4 0 in the league. Um, I think that they're kind of a place in turmoil right now because um, they, I mean, they released Envy. Who's who's going to play off tank for them? I, I don't know. I think the Dynasty are going to be really, uh, really motivated. They've started every every stage strong. I think they're going to do the same this stage. Um, they're going to now that it's four teams, they're really going to want to make that playoff. Like they got they got no excuses to not make the stage playoffs this time. Um, so yeah, I think Dynasty win this one pretty easily in a 4-0 sweep. Um, this it will be a good one to keep an eye on though. We'll see if Dynasty um, plays any of their new players at all. Um, and we'll see how Valiant's um, different roster um, will will perform. If they show more cohesion. I think they're a bit less talented than they were before. But I think that they might be a little better now. We shall see. Um, It'll be, it'll be funny if uh, the Valiant play Bunny at all because Bunny used to be a Tracer player for Dynasty and they they got rid of him um, a couple of days ago and the uh, Valiant picked him up. But the Valiant have soon, so I don't know if Bunny will play at all. Um, guess I'll have to tune in and watch. So, yep, match number two, Dynasty 4 to 0. Now, a very interesting matchup is next. You got the San Fran Shock against the LA Gladiators. So, the Gladiators have won the matchup both times in Stage 1 and 2. Um, the maps that they're going to be on are Volskaya, Numbani, Ilios, and then Junkertown. So, for the Gladiators, um, Ilios has been a pretty decent map for them. Um, Numbani has been touch and go. Sometimes they look good on Numbani, sometimes they don't. It's kind of the same thing with Volskaya. Um, they really struggle with second point on Volskaya sometimes. And then... Um, Junkertown's a pretty good map for them. So I'm not quite sure about the Shock. Um, I don't remember seeing much of them on these. I know the Gladiators beat the Shock on um, on Volskaya in Stage 2. So, But it was a close It was a close one. So we shall see how that uh, plays out. So the Shock, like I said, Super is available. Um, with all due respect to Nomi, I think Super is quite a bit better than him at main tank. Um, 
so that's an upgrade and like we've been talking about um, if you know Monte Cristo at all he's kind of in love with him um, it's architect he is a very good DPS player and he we'll see um, I think the shack a lot of people predict that they'll be like the gladiators of last stage that team that kind of like breaks out and competes for a playoff spot um, they went three and seven in both of their previous stages. They're sitting at six and fourteen. Um, then the Gladiators are an even ten and ten. So I mean, this is a really important matchup for both teams. Um, I think the the Shocks scare me. I'm going to be honest. They scare me now. Um, they're they can throw so many different um, lineups at you that um, it's yeah. They're I could see them making a push for playoffs this stage. But because it's their first game kind of playing together, and we'll see how much Super plays. I don't know if they'll be in every game um, or if they'll keep Nomi for a couple maps and have Super just focus on a couple other maps so they can kind of focus on synergizing with, like, one strategy for a certain map. Um, and it's kind of the same thing with, like, Gladiator's last stage um, where they played the Fuel right away, and they lost because it was a pretty close matchup, but they lost because um, Fissure was new and they were still trying to, like, work out some of the kinks. And um, Super has been with the team for a long time. He just hasn't been able to play. So I think that they won't have as much of an adjustment period. Um, plus they're all speaking same language, stuff like that. Um, so I think this could be a very tough matchup for the Gladiators. But in the end, I think they will win just because they've been playing together for longer than the Shock roster have. Um, I think they're going to be really motivated. They're sitting at exactly 500 right now. So now's their chance to really um, create some separation and um, get off to a good start because, I mean, both of these teams, I could see them making, sneaking in at three or four and making this stage playoff. Um, I think Gladiators will win the first two maps, then the Shock will bring it back on, um, on Elios, and then Gladiators will finish them off on Junker Town. So, those are the games on Wednesday. Moving on to Thursday. We got the Florida Mayhem versus the New York Excel. So, uh, four and sixteen Mayhem. Of course, they were one and thirteen. They finished a pretty strong three and three um, against the eighteen and two defending champs, New York Excel. So, they're on Volskaya for first. Then the second one, they're playing on Blizzard World. Yep, you heard it right. Blizzard World is in the rotation for this stage. I'm super excited to see what teams do for this one. Um, it's not a very well-regarded map. A lot of people don't like it. That doesn't mean it's not going to be fun to watch, though. Um, uh, number three is Elios, and then they're going to wrap up on Route 6-6. So, I believe that in Stage 1 and Stage 2, the Excelsior um, beat the Mayhem. But I think in Stage 1, it was 3-0. to zero. The Mayhem tied a map. And then Stage 2, it was 3-1. to one. Mayhem actually won a map. I think it's going to be about the same now. I think the Mayhem will take a map. They'll play well. Um, in the end, the Excelsior's superior uh, talent, like coordination, a bunch of other stuff, um, will be the reason why they win. They just Their players are just so good. But uh, Mayhem have looked so much better these last few weeks, and I think that that will be the reason why they are able to take a map here. So 3-1, to one, New York Excel. If I had to pick a map, maybe Blizzard World, honestly, because it's going to be new to both teams. Maybe the Mayhem will try out some weird strategy that will work out really well for them and uh, take Excel by surprise. So yeah, I think this one will be closer than people think, but when push comes to sub, Excel will, will win this one. Um, Match number two. This one should be a very good one. You got the 13 and 7 fourth place Philadelphia Fusion versus the 12 and 8 sixth place Boston Uprising. So this is, this is a big matchup for both teams. I mean, for the Uprising, you win this one, you're you're pushing right by top four there, um, and you're not too far behind Dynasty for three. So, um, and it's similar with Fusion. You win this one, and if the Dynasty lose, which I don't think they will, but if they do, then you're tied for third. Um, plus both teams would like to make the stage three finals and uh, every matchup is obviously important for that. So they're going to be playing on Volskaya, Blizzard World, Ilios, and then Route 66. So exact same as the previous matchup I believe. Um, Philly, they got destroyed on um, 
on Volskaya against the um, against the Excel in the title game. And it's been Volskaya has been one of the Uprising's best maps in the game, if not their best map in the game. I think they're undefeated on it. So I think first one there's a huge um, fusion are attacking first. So I think there will be a huge opportunity here for the um, Uprising to get off to a good start and take the first map. I think they will. But after that, I think it's going to be all fusion. Um, I don't remember how their matchup ended in stage two. I, did the Uprising win that one? Was that one of their three twos that they won? Or did Philly sweep? I don't remember, so I won't say. But um, these are two pretty closely matched teams. I think Philadelphia is superior in pretty much every way, but not by that much. They're just like a little bit better. And I think that will put them over the top. Um, on the, the rest of these maps, they're going to be more just um, open. But if if Philly wins the first map, if they win Volskaya, it's over. Like Vos Uprising have no chance. But if Uprising take map one, maybe they can take Elios too. Um, Uprising have performed well on uh, on Elios and on um, control maps in general. And Philly is a little weaker on that. So honestly, the Uprising could win this one three to two. If uh, if the fusion don't take care of business, because the I mean, the tiebreakers also control. So um, I think there's a big opportunity for uprising, but because Philadelphia is just a little bit better, I think they're going to pull this one out three to one in a very tight uh, matchup. This one, either this one or the Shock Gladiator matchup, I think will be the best. But the next matchup, don't sleep on this one either. Got the London Spitfire against the. Houston Outlaws. So when these guys played in the stage one playoffs, uh, Spitfire won. They won three to one. Um, but they had, they've had some very close games. The Outlaws have beaten the Spitfire once. Um, they're going to be playing on Temple of Anubis, Blizzard World, Nepal, and then Route 66. So I know that for the Spitfire, um, control's been a bit weird for them. Um, that's probably their weakest game type. But at the same time, who knows? Um, could go either way. Um, I think that just team-wise, the Spitfire are better. So not too much of an issue there. I think it's going to be 3-1. to one. Um, The Allies will play pretty close. Um, but in the end... Spitfire will pull it out. I think if I had to do one one map in particular, it would be... I think Nepal would be a good one for the Outlaws to win. So, I don't know. We'll see. This is this will be a good matchup for, for uh, both teams. The Spitfire, they're trying to bounce back from losing in the Stage 2 playoffs to uh, Philadelphia. And the Outlaws, after kind of a rough stage in Stage 2, they're going to be looking to try to make their way back up the standings. They're in fifth right now. Um, they're pretty close to, they're only two games back of third, and they're only two games ahead of, like, eighth. So um, every matchup for them is close yet. But I think in this one, Spitfire, they're just a better team, and because of that, they will take the win. So there's the first two days of stage number three. Some very interesting matchups here. I think that um, we're going to learn a lot. I think Shanghai, Dallas is a good one to watch. Um, I think San Fran and LA is going to be a very interesting one. Um, Boston, Philly, and then London and Houston. I think those are all very good matchups that are kind of going to set the tone for some of these teams and how stage three is going to go for them. And um, yeah, this is, I mean, it's how you set the stage. Um, and these, when we get towards the end of the, uh, this stage, it's going to be very important to see um, like who got each number of maps and who won early on and who lost early on. Uh, the Gladiators lost early on to the um, Fuel, who they honestly should not have lost to. And in the end, that, that uh, pretty much they lost because of that.
that ruined this that ruined the stage for him so um, we shall see top four top four is really hard to predict this one I think that Excelsior are definitely gonna be in there will they be number one or number two I don't know I think that the spit or not this yeah I think the Spitfire will contest them pretty um, evenly on this one I think they'll do a bit better than they did the other stages they'll go eight and two or nine and one um, so I think they'll definitely still be the one two. I think this is the time when Dynasty finally gets a hold of themselves and they take third. And then we shall see who gets the fourth one. If I it looks like it's gonna be Philly. They're looking like the strongest, the next strongest team. But Outlaws, Uprising, Gladiators, and Shock, I think, and potentially the Valiant, I think will be right on their tails. So we shall see. Um, I'm super excited. Strongest team, but... And who I think... Oh, sorry. I was going to end it. This has been a weird video. I thought I... I for a second there, I thought I wasn't um, having audio. And I got scared, but I'm good. Okay. So, who do I think is going to win it all, though? This is going to shock you, especially if you've read the, um, or if you, if you do end up watching the Power Rankings video. This will surprise you. But I got the Dynasty. I think the Dynasty, they're stage number two. It's happened to them twice now. They just missed the playoffs. I think that they're finally going to be like, whoa, wow. Okay, we we just missed twice now. Like we we came in as probably the proverbial favorite to win it all, and okay, we have not we've not really performed the way we want to. And um, for it'll be very tough for them, especially if they have to play London in the stage playoffs. I think if they play London first, then they're in big trouble because London kind of has their number. I think if they play the XL, it'll be very close, but they can win that and. Who knows? Maybe um, maybe Fusion will sneak in and they'll they'll finally uh, put it all together and they'll eke over the edge and win win it all. But I don't think they will. I think I don't know who Excelsior would pick if they're number one. I'm assuming Excelsior will be number one and they'll they'd probably pick to play Fusion um, and then Spitfire and Dynasty have to play each other and that's not great for Dynasty. But I think. I think they'll find a way. I think they gotta. This has to be their stage. The other two top Korean teams, Excelsior and Spitfire, have both won a stage. I, it's got to be their turn. Um, I think if if Dynasty doesn't win, it'll definitely be Spitfire. I think that um, they kind of had their kick in the ass when they lost to Philadelphia. Because with all due respect for Philadelphia, they're a fantastic team. They shouldn't beat the Spitfire. The Spitfire are a better team. So. Um, I think that they're finally going to just like nail it down and they're going to become more consistent and they're going to just take care of business because when they're at their best, I mean, who, who can stand against them? The Excelsior, I think, can really give them a fight, but honestly, I still think the Spitfire have the highest ceiling of any team in the Overwatch League and I'm going to stick by that until I really see um, a team surpass that. Um, but yeah, hopefully, I'm just I'm hoping my Gladiators can sneak in at four. Um, we'll see. The other LA team will be a factor. Um, I would be totally cool if the Shock made a run for it. I, I like their team a lot. Um, I like I like a lot of their guys. I'm not a huge fan of Sinatra. Um, his just he has such a, like a cocky demeanor, um, and I'm not a huge fan of that. But um, I, I do like their team, and I, I still have to give him some respect, even though he really let us down uh, when he's on Team USA. He got totally trashed on by Sabioli. And the World Cup, which, I mean, it is it is Sabioli. But still, um, I've rambled on enough. You heard it here. I've been disappointed in them. All of Stage 1 and 2, but this is it. Dynasty, they're going to do it. This is They're going to get over the top this, this time. This is their stage. They're going to take it, and uh, they're going to tell everyone, hey, guys, we're still here. And when those last playoffs come, you better watch out for us. All right, so that's it. There's the end of the video. Thank you for sticking in. Or sticking in? Don't stick it in. Well, do stick it in, but be safe. Use protection. Uh, anyway, I've rambled on enough. See you in the next video. Watch some Overwatch League these next two days. 
Bye.